Thank you, my beloved sister Nancy. That's Reverend Nancy Woods, everyone. She <laughs> forgot to tell you who she is. So <laughs> I'm going to put that right there. Good morning to you all. What a pleasure it is to be here with you and uh, spend time together in this space. There's thumbtacks rolling off here. And um, a big hello to all of you that are with us online that are um, joining us, whether it's through the Center for Spiritual Living Granada Hills, which I know is the um, a live group, but also um, our beloved community, the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, who has joined us in both this virtual space and in this um, physical space. I was telling Dr. Maureen when she walked in um, and that this became a bit surreal earlier for me because um, it's my first time being at a podium since COVID hit. And so um, I'm just going to take it in for a second because the emotions just rolled up in me. And not only the physical aspect of being here with you, um, feeling the heaven that is within each of us, um, but hearing the beautiful music by Jason singing Casey Musgraves. Thank you, Jason. Most beautiful. And I love her and her music, and you did her quite proud. Um, but to be here in this space, as referenced by Reverend Nancy, in so many ways, this physical space is home to me and home to my heart. When I first became um, a minister um, in 2002, 2003, somewhere in there, uh, my beloved soulmate, Dr. Maureen Hoyt, was the minister here, and she would invite me out to speak. And um, I feel like I cut my teeth here in many ways on this very podium. So to me, I know that there's no mistake through the divine making itself known by means of me and each one of you that are part of this experience, both in the room and in that virtual space, that um, the kickoff for this next stage of my journey of expressing myself is, as a minister should happen here. And so on behalf of me and all who get to benefit from that, I want to thank Dr. Maureen Hoyt and Reverend Mike McMorrow for doing an intervention, basically, and telling me, <laughs> get your B-U-T-T -T back on the P-O-D-I-U-M. And so here I am. So with that, I want to ask you all a question to kick off my time with you together. And you know what? I was going to try to monitor so I didn't speak over time, but what the hell? Put a scone in my pocket. <laughs> Who wants to experience change in life? Raise your hands. And even virtually out in there in the world, if you want to experience change, raise your hands and keep them up high. You know, it doesn't matter if you got B.O. It's okay. It's the morning time, <laughs> right? It's good. That's all part of God. Keep them up. I didn't say put them down. Now, here's the next question. Who actually wants to change? Keep your hands up. So, so many of your hands went down, and even those of you that kept them up, I can feel the ambit. You can put them down now. I'm starting to get the waft of your, your expression of divinity. The thing for us to remember is that we must participate in that change. I know that personally I'm experiencing change in this very moment because, as I said before, this is the first time that I've been back on a podium. And for me to have this particular experience, which has been called forth not only by Reverend Mike and Dr. Maureen and from myself and each one of you, but from that place within me that Jason spoke about called heaven, that is saying there's something within me that is calling me to express myself in a greater way than ever before, not judging what was before as good or bad, but that deep yearning, that deep calling to let that divine energy that is within me out to play. And that way to play for me is to express it through the gift. One of the gifts that's been given of me is to share my wisdom, my heart, my soul, my energy. But to say yes to this wasn't necessarily that easy today, for I had to be willing to engage in myself changing. And in fact, I'll make a commitment to the audio booth right now. I'll make a change to stop hitting my microphone. How about that? <laughs> right? But what I had to do was move beyond the comfort zone of the last 84 Sundays, and 82 of those have been for me behind my little television studio that I've created in my office in my home, of looking at a screen and running um, the slideshow on the other screen and having this virtual experience with those that I love and making a difference into the world through the realm of technology as opposed to the physical connection of hand-to-hand, heart-to-heart, soul-to-soul, eye-to-eye. And it's 
means that we are all, if that can be done in that way, as well as it can be done in this human way, it's a reinforcement of the very things that we teach in the teachings of the science of mind, as evidenced by the Declaration of Principles, that there's one power that exists within us and as us, and it's expressing itself through us. And that is true for us, whether or not that we are looking at it through a computer screen. And thank God, literally, however you define that power, or that that technology existed when this pandemic hit, right? What a blessing and an opportunity that we've had to move into that realm as we've chosen to grow together. And so I will declare right here and right now for the congregation known as the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles that let's all open our mind and our heart and our soul as to what the next dimension expression can be for when we decide to come back together and be physically together as we choose to grow together. Because what's required of each of us when we in step into these changes of life that are being called forth that we've all said yes to, whether we're aware of it or not, the reason I say we've said yes to it is because we've all agreed to participate in our journey of finding personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. That's the journey of the metaphysician, to not step, to stand back and let it be doctrinated for us what we're supposed to believe, how we're supposed to express, and how we view life. But to open ourselves up, as Reverend Nancy said, to and get rid of the need to try to understand and be willing to let the power itself make itself known to us and through us and then reveal itself through us in a new way. And that happens through the act of letting change do its thing through us. What we must be willing to do if we decide that we want to be an awakened being on our journey of spiritual awakening is to dig deep. The theme here this month is to dig deep. For me, I've had to dig deep a lot over the last few years, and certainly in the last 18 months, because, and even in this particular experience here, because I made a commitment to myself when I said yes to being the spiritual leader of the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, and that was to see and engage in every experience that came my way relative to ministry through the lens of a spiritual experiment of what do I really, really, really believe? Do I believe what I stand up and speak about? Do I believe what I teach? Do I believe what happens in counseling sessions that I have? And am I willing to let those beliefs evolve into a higher framework, a higher vibrational frequency? As Dr. David Hawkins says in the map of consciousness, am I willing to move to that realm of my divine nature and let that be the vibrational frequency from which I live life? And if I am willing to do that, the only way I believe that that can happen is if we're willing to then dig deep into our soul and to rid ourselves of anything and everything that is contrary to our divine nature. Our divine nature in our philosophy, faith, and way of life known as practitioners of the science of mind is that we are imbued with, at a very minimum, the qualities of peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom. Now, I know for the CSL LA peeps who are watching online and those that are here in the room, I know that you think, Jesus Christ, not just the man on the cross, but the concept of the energy of Puritus in life itself is that he says it every single freaking Sunday he talks about them. And I do. And I will continue to do so because it's important for us to ask ourselves when we hear peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom? Are we allowing ourselves to engage in those through an intellectual approach to life? Or are we allowing the resonance field of those qualities of divine that exist within us to rise up and then let us know about them, express them, experience them, literally be them in a new way? And in so doing, attract back into our world more and more, and more of that. For that to happen, and it is being called for it to happen through all of us. I mean, think about it. 
18 months ago, we needed a wake-up call to such a degree a pandemic hit us. What did we learn from that? How did we grow from that? No, personally, I'm still growing, but what we're called to do right now is to dig deep. And so I invite you to create a visual in your mind of what that looks like. In researching for today, I pulled up two different um, visual images of digging deep. And one is, if you're a, a, a canine lover like I am, um, think of your four-legged spiritual offspring up to their shoulders in the ground, digging, maybe for a bone, maybe for a tunnel, maybe to escape, maybe to get a prize to bring back to your loved one. That's one expression of how that expression of spirit digs deep in their life on their journey. Another could be someone with a shovel. It doesn't matter exactly what it looks like. What's important is that we all decide that on this journey, we're willing and are willing to commit to doing the actual digging itself. The definition of dig deep when researched is this, to exert oneself mentally, physically. It's that act of understanding that Reverend Nancy goes, I'm done with that concept. Right? The other is to then search thoroughly in life right? and ask ourselves, well, what are we searching for? Well, here's the definition that I like in regards to this, and it's from this metaphysical website called Glove Works. Do with that as you want. <laughs> but it's this. To dig deep means to make an effort with all of your resources. Digging deep refers to your ability to look inside yourself and see your potential and using all you have to reach your goals, to live out your values, and to overcome obstacles. Now take a deep breath in, whether you're in, on screen or in person. Let's all take a deep breath in together. And exhale into your mask if you're in the room. And let's hear it again. To dig deep means to make an effort with all of your resources. Think of your resources in life, physically, and then think of the great resource of all. Digging deep refers to your ability to look inside yourself and then to see your potential and using all you have to reach your goals, whatever you define them to be, to live out your values and to overcome obstacles. It refers to your resiliency and your ability to bounce back after setbacks. Digging deep requires a growth mindset, a willingness to get uncomfortable in order to change and improve. Is today the day that you're willing to change and improve? And let's just take the improvement word out of it and say, are you willing to get uncomfortable in order to change and evolve? Because I believe what we're called here to be are conscious evolutionists. So if we're here today to dig deep, what are we here digging for? Well, I like to take a play on the Ernest Holmes quote, and I believe it's Ernest Holmes. If not, Dr. Maureen will let, Dr. Maureen will let me know later. <laughs> I think that what we're digging for is the thing that we're digging with. Is that Holmes? Yeah. Holmes, what I thought, right? And that is the thing itself. What we're digging for is the thing we're digging with. In other words, what we're digging for as practicing metaphysicians is a greater awareness of our awareness. That really is the journey of the metaphysician is to become more aware at all times of our awareness. Now, today may be the day for each and every one of us, or certainly one in particular of you, that you just had that light bulb moment go off of where like, oh my God, yes. It is important for me to not just be aware of life, not just be aware of my ability to co-create the things I desire to experience and express in life, not just to be aware of the physical elements of life, but to become aware of my awareness of them. It's through that fine tuning of our awareness of our awareness that we then get the opportunity to lean into our 
divinity. It's as we embrace our divinity in a greater way, which every thought with every action, with every reaction, with every interaction, with life itself. Then our awareness, our consciousness begins to grow. It begins to reveal itself as itself, with whom its qualities, once again, are peace, power, Beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom. Peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom. Peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom. Okay, that was not on the notes, right? <laughs> but what's important for us to remember, the great Deepak Chopra tells us that all that we have in life is awareness. He says that's all there is. Ernest Holmes and his posse said it was all consciousness, right? In the modern world of metaphysics, we know that to be true while we also know that's not enough. It's true on one level, and one of the greatest metaphysicians I know of all times says that it's important for us to live in a world consciously and awakened to the world of and. Dr. Maureen Hoy. That we can be aware, and we must be aware of our awareness, and know that consciousness is all there is, and to know that we live in a universe that's governed by spiritual law, and the power is infinite by nature, and we individualize it, and we attract into our world the very thing that we know ourselves to be. When I hear you, when do you make sure I, you heard me say that right? We don't attract into the world that which we are. We attract into our field of experience that which we know ourselves to be. And... We live in a world that is ripe with opportunity to become more aware of our awareness every single day. And we do that by digging deeper and thinking higher. Dr. Holmes tells us that we should daily feel a deeper union with life. He didn't say we should know that there is a deeper union. He says every day we should feel a deeper union. In other words, get in touch with it at that place which is transcendent of the intellect. He says it's a greater sense of that indwelling presence, a greater sense of that which is of the seen and unseen. At the Center for Spiritual Living in Los Angeles, our vision statement is supporting individuals finding their personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. That spiritual awakening is going to feel and look different for each and every one of us. Also, our theme for the month is the multidimensionality of oneness. Very light topic. <laughs> and one way that I was reminded of that was I had this quote to share with you today for us to use as an instruction and a remembrance of how we are to engage in life. And it's from the great teacher, Winnie the Pooh. And he says that life is a journey, I say he, I don't know if, what gender Winnie is actually, so let's just say they said, life is a journey to be experienced, not a problem to be solved. Mm -hmm. Now some version of that I read on Facebook today by my beloved that I keep referencing, that was written by Soren Kierkegaard, who may be the original and Winnie stole it, not giving credit. Mm -hmm. But think about this today as we all agree to living and digging deeper than ever before, that the life that we have before us is a journey to be experienced, not a problem to be solved. And the way that we get to have some dominion, if you will, over our experiences is by becoming in tune with our awareness of our awareness of how we express our divine nature. For our experiences are a result of how we express ourselves, awakening to spirit within us. Well, what is a spiritual awakening? I love this definition. To spiritually awaken is to remember that who and what you are and have always been is the infinite, immortal, sea of consciousness. 
one with all that exists, not as an intellectual understanding, but as a real and tangible experience and lifestyle. A real and tangible experience and lifestyle. So today, I invite you, I encourage you to join me on the journey of digging deep in a new way, to make an effort from this moment forward to use your resource in a new way. And that resource is God. Not an anthropomorphic God of some power in the sky, but that indwelling presence that you feel when your heart beats. <laughs> it's that presence that brings the joy out in you when you laugh. I guess you're coming back to the podium tells me my time is there. Oh, no, I, That's good. I don't know what time I started. I don't know what time I was supposed to end. I was about to ask how I'm doing. <laughs> but let's all take a deep breath in and feel that presence. Jason, can I have some piano music, please? And I invite us all to close our eyes. And to see ourselves going deeper into our soul as we dig deeper. Deeper than we've ever been before. Maybe going so deep that we see some ancestors that we've never seen before. Experiences that are in the subconscious aspect of mind that we were unaware of. And those experiences that have brought us joy. And let's envelop those in a field of gratitude. Feeling it, whether you're in the room or in the presence of your own private environment. And to know that it's there, this energy exists. That's the sea of consciousness that's referenced. And so placing one of your hands on your heart, feeling your heart beat, Let that be the reminder of the ability to access this depth of soul. Your soul, my soul. For the truth is it's only one soul. And then while feeling this heartbeat, you can take your other hand and let it rise to the sky. Letting that be a reminder that we're called to think higher thoughts just as if we're riding a slinky going deeper into our soul to connect to the only thing there is while climbing higher and higher and higher to a higher framework of mind. Remembering that a very basic thought pattern, we get to choose to think of peace, of power, of beauty, of joy and light and life and love and wisdom. All of the qualities of the divine that exist by means of you and me expressing that one soul making a difference on the planet. And so let's all say yes out loud. Yes. To being more awakened to our awareness of our awareness on the journey. Not needing to understand not needing to understand how or why. Just being present in the presence as we ride the ride. Bringing those two hands together back in front of our heart in prayer position. We lean forward with gratitude and say, Namaste, thank you. And so it is. Thank you all.